according to the Masons of California website. There are approximately 13,000 Masonic lodges in the United States. To put that into perspective, there are a little less than 20,000 incorporated cities, villages, and towns in the United States. Wherever one is in America, it is nearly certain that they are very close to at least one Masonic Lodge. Yet Masons and Masonic Lodges seem to be talked about extremely little, considering how prevalent they are. The Masonic meetings, meetings themselves are secretive. Their meetings and ceremonies are not open to the public, and Masonic members are not allowed to speak about what goes on in them at all. Though Masonic groups frequently claim that they are not religious in nature, every prospective member must profess belief in a supreme being, and I have that in quotation marks. Freemasonry is not concerned with whom one considers that supreme being to be. Freemasonry also claims to not discuss religion in, at their meetings. Whatever understanding of God that one has is acceptable for Freemasonry. It is the same concept, basically, that, that is found in AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, the concept that one can have a God of their own conception. And AA also claims to not be a religion. Freemasonry also teaches that people are in spiritual darkness until they enter through the, through the degrees of Freemasonry. That is quite in interesting. It is also a form of gaslighting. The message to society is that Freemasonry is not a religion, and yet those who would become members in Freemasonry must acknowledge being in spiritual darkness, which they are seeking to escape through Freemasonry. And Freemasonry is inherently theistic. And beyond that, Freemasons can't talk about Masonic rituals and ceremonies to those who are not Freemasons. But Freemasonry is allegedly not a religion. Okay. Some of the highest ranking and most well-known Masonic authorities have admitted otherwise in their own writings on Freemasonry. Albert Pike, 19th century Sovereign Grand Master Mason, says, Every Masonic Lodge is a temple of religion, and its teachings are instruction in religion. That's from his book, Morals and Dogma of the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Writer of Freemasonry, page 213. Manly P. Hall, 20th century, 33rd degree Mason, the, says the true Mason is not creed-bound. He realizes with the divine illumination of his lodge that, is a, that as a Mason, his religion must be universal. Christ, Buddha, or Muhammad, the name means little, for he recognizes only the light and not the bearer. He worships at every at every shrine, bows before every altar, whether in temple, mosque, or cathedral, realizing with his true un, his with his truer understanding the oneness of all spiritual truth. That's from his book, The Lost Keys of Freemasonry, page sixty five. A man can enter Freemasonry while professing to be a Christian. Yet he can't do so without basically denying Jesus up front and entering into a system which inherently violates biblical principles in many, many ways. For a man to simply confess that he is in darkness is a lie if he has indeed obtained new life in Jesus Christ. And by that lie, he is actually going from the realm of light to the realm of darkness, the very opposite of the thing which he is professing to do upon entering Freemasonry. Johnny 12. Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. That is from a letter to a generally faithful Christian church for of those considered to be abiding in Jesus Christ. It is not from a letter to a lodge of Freemasons. Regarding the person who has never truly been reconciled to God and born again through faith in Jesus Christ, they are basically admitting this upon entering Freemasonry, and they are simultaneously going to the wrong source to pass from darkness to light. They are thus plunging themselves into deeper darkness upon entering Freemasonry. God has made himself known through the Bible and through the flesh and blood revelation of himself in Jesus Christ, whom his written word testifies of and points to. Some 
119, through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. The Bible teaches that spiritual light is in Jesus Christ, that it is only in Jesus Christ, and that it is entered into by departing from the darkness of sin, and turning to live under his authority through the redemption for sin, which he has purchased by his blood through his death on the cross. Colossians chapter 1 verses 12 to 17. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet or fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us, speaking to faith, Paul, speaking to faithful Christians, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. John chapter 1 verses 1 to 18. In the beginning was the, wor was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John, referring to John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spoke. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and John is speaking of Christians walking in new life in Jesus Christ. And grace for grace, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. The case regarding Freemasonry is pretty much also the case regarding the Gnostics, whom the Apostles contended with. In my estimation, Freemasonry is ancient Gnosticism in a slightly different package and employing somewhat different terminology. Both claim to have secret knowledge, which they can't tell the public, and they both claim to have spiritual enlightenment, which one must go outside the realm of the biblical testimony to obtain. The book of First John is basically a rebuke to the Gnostics, intended to set the Christians straight regarding the false concepts and subtle lies which the Gnostics were trying to lead them astray with. Here are some key statements from 1 John, which directly oppose and rebuke the principles and claims of Freemasonry due to its very strong correlation with ancient Gnosticism. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1-7 to seven, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Remember Psalm 119, 105. This is talking about following Jesus by walking in the truth of his word. The book will make that clear in the following verses. And then we read later in 1 John chapter 2, verses 20 to 27. But ye... Speaking to the true Christian who loves Jesus Christ and keeps his word. But ye have an unction or an anointing from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth 
that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the, be from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man should teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. John is not speaking about, John is not saying that you do not need faithful Christian teachers to teach you. He's teaching precisely against what the claims of Freemasonry and of ancient Gnosticism. The concept that a Christian would need to go outside of the biblical revelation in Jesus Christ to obtain the true knowledge of God and spiritual light. Freemasonry by its very nature says that one can come into the light without obediently believing in Jesus Christ. Freemasonry even implicitly says that you can blatantly deny Jesus Christ and rather worship any supreme being of your own conception. I know that's an oxymoron, but that's what Freemasonry teaches, to fulfill the pre prerequisites of entering into the light, which it claims is in and ultimately only within Freemasonry. Does the Bible warn of a false light which, which seduces people away from the true light in Jesus Christ? Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 14 and 15. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. They are deceitful in spite of, and often even in, the good which they promote. Earlier in the very same chapter, the Apostle Paul even told the Corinthians, in his zeal to prepare them to be ready to stand before God, his fear that they would be drawn away from the real Jesus Christ by false spirituality, even false spirituality presented in Jesus' name. This goes well beyond Freemasonry, of course, but it's applicable to Freemasonry too, because it's not like the Freemasons are typically going to come right out and admit their opposition to Christianity. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2-4 to four. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin, virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth, preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Earlier in First John, the Apostle stated the following, in First John chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is a propitiation or atonement for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily or truly is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him, on himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Yet Freemasonry enables and accepts the violation of his commandments. Here are two blatant examples right from the Ten Commandments. The first commandment, Exodus chapter 20, verses 2 and 3. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The Ten Commandments were given to summarize several key principles of the moral law of God, which is binding upon all of, all of mankind to Israel at the time in a localized way. Though we ourselves have not been brought out of the land of Egypt from slavery in Egypt personally, we must worship the God who brought Israel out of bondage, out of bondage in Egypt, the Father of Jesus Christ. We are also commanded in the Bible not to have spiritual fellowship with those who do not do so. This practically enables the worship of other gods. Involvement in Freemasonry inherently does bring about unrighteous fellowship. 
it is not even permitted in Freemasonry to tell those at Masonic meetings that they must worship the God of the Bible and the Father of Jesus Christ in order to, to truly be in the light. How could anyone who is walking in the light themselves then even be part of a Masonic lodge? They could not be. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14-18 to 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Or what agreement, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Freemasons want to trace their origins to biblical times. We see from, from what we just read that gatherings, which were of the nature of their modern gatherings, were diagnosed as evil and rebuked in biblical times as well. And then we read the second commandment in Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 to 6. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself down to them, nor serve them. For I the word thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. This commandment can be violated by creating an image of God in one's mind, or by adopting the concept of God, which another has made in their mind and promoted. The same principles are involved in Freemasonry's, in Freemasonry's blatant opposition to this commandment, which are involved in Freemasonry's blatant opposition to the first commandment. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 to 24 say, Woe well, unto them that call evil good, and good evil that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for, for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. And Freemasonry does take away the righteousness of the righteous from him, in by, by the fact that they would claim, if they were up front, that a Christian who was being faithful to Jesus Christ's word in the Bible, their claim that such a person still would need the light of Freemasonry in order to, um, in order to escape darkness, the false light of Freemasonry. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the word of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. And in relation to these things, one sure proof that a church is compromised and corrupted by darkness is the allowance of, in, of involvement in Freemasonry among its membership. And this is very, very common. There are even many pastors and others in positions of church leadership who are Freemasons, if this isn't all clear enough, John thus concluded his first epistle, 1 John chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. And we, speaking of Christians who are following the real Jesus by walking in the light of his word, and we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness, and we know that the Son of God has come and hath, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. The me this message has been given to warn people about the darkness of Freemasonry in terms of its incompatibility with Christianity and how it destroys the souls of those who come under its influence. We could also talk about Freemasonry in terms of its influence on society today in the political realm and in other ways and its related symbolism in prominent places like Washington, D.C., and how such symbolism is hidden in plain sight 
in many other ways too, including the Masonic symbolism on the United States $1 bill. Yet doing so now does not seem to be profitable, lest it distract from the theme of the message, which is evidently a greater priority to deal with. Hebrews 11.6 But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It is impossible to please him unless we diligently seek to understand him, based upon how he has evidently made himself known to mankind in Jesus Christ, through the testimony of the Bible, and unless we act accordingly in surrender to that revelation, our faith cannot be acceptable to him if it is not of that character.